The paintings in the baths are focused on Mithras, I understand. Yes, they are what make this place remarkable. And that is why Sir Rodney came here? He believed that the golden knife, which is an ancient ritual item, was hidden somewhere around the baths. I admit that it would be wonderful. So, a bit about true, the golden knife providing immortality and you are not concerned by the reputation is not of this artifact. entirely out of place Before with like dead, mystery cults. Typically, they After they, they dead, well, then it becomes a curse. <laughs> they they weren't like, oh, this is it. It's it grants immortality. Uh, but like there, the the notion of like for interrogation doing something with the cult in order to secure a place in the afterlife for yourself as opposed to just like the underworld the um was not unusual in no, mystery cults there is nothing to say we're, you know we're, you're talking we're about this and i'm once. suddenly realizing how Not's asymmetrical so my sherlock holmes genre was. principles are he was wrong uh, like i have visions in this the game they introduce the all sorts of like adventure cult fault. stuff into a sherlock Calm holmes down, adventure and i don't like it i think it's a bad idea and that they shouldn't have done it but the, the reality is that you can insert Sherlock Holmes into any, like, weird cult adventure, and I'll think that's awesome. Like, it only works when you're putting the Sherlock Holmes, like, garnish on an adventure story. If you put an adventure garnish on a Sherlock Holmes story, it ain't right. So what were your thoughts on the uh, Robert Downey Jr. films? Uh, well, I thought that they were bad uh, for multiple reasons. I, I don't think that they were. It was. It was necessarily a bad. Okay, you know what? That's a lie. I do actually think it was a bad Wait, idea. Wait, there were more than one. Yeah, there was yeah. another. One. There were, there it was the two. first movie. Oh man! It was literally the first movie I ever fell asleep uh, during in the uh, the theater. <laughs> I was just coming off like the anti paladin RPG marathon, so I, I fell asleep in the theater right as they were explaining the mystery. So I didn't know what it was. Like I, I woke up like basically as they were wrapping up the movie and I just missed the explanation to all of the mysteries and then I like a, a few months later it went on streaming and I started watching it and I got right up to the point where I fell asleep and I'm like you know what this movie blows chunks and I turned it off so I still don't know what the maybe it was like a real mind blowing final act of that movie I honestly have no idea well I'll yeah, be honest one though, thing I, that I, I discovered suck. is that um Arthur Conan Doyle was actually really into like cults himself and like oh, spiritualism. Yeah, so like that's that's probably where maybe some of it has to do with. Like it's not Arthur like I would say it's not true. It's not like it's not true to the to the uh, Sherlock Holmes sort of like mythos. Yeah, like, oh yeah, to be clear, Arthur Conan Doyle straight up thought fairies were real and that we had photographic evidence of them. He was, like, definitely super into spiritualist stuff, and he was definitely into stuff that we would consider, like, occult fantasy genre trappings, for the most part. I say we, but I mean, I, I guess, you know, some people it's more than that, but... I, to be clear, I think that it's mostly just that Sherlock Holmes stories work better when they are constrained to what is realistic and possible because it allows you to be a more active and empowered participant in the mystery. Like, I, I read a Sherlock Holmes-style RPG campaign and I realized very quickly that I couldn't put in any supernatural elements because as soon as the solution to a mystery becomes something which is inherently unknown uh, and inherently not understood, then it causes people to disengage because they don't have all of the pieces to the puzzle. They can't have all the pieces to the puzzle, rather. It's less satisfying. And I, I think that the same thing is broadly true for Sherlock Holmes stories, which are based around deduction and kind of reasoning. But if you want to put a character who's deductive and uses reasoning in a story which is not about those things, then I think that's great. I would say Wait, that is, like, true for everything except, like, murder mysteries where you actually have, like, ghosts and, like, yeah. that sort of element where you're trying to uncover the murder, which is still very much based in science, but you have, like, a tinge, so to speak, of a supernatural. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's true. 
So we're really going. Or when it's illusion to be supernatural, but I'm, it's I'm not. I'm getting all the possible conclusions available, so we can switch between them. Um, so we've got two things to figure out here. Um, Who and what? One. Was it a silver weapon or was it an ice weapon? Um, and two, uh, which one of these three people had the best motive to kill him and would have been able to actually find the uh, Temple of Mithras? Because we, because that's that's I think an important clue here is um, we found a lamp in the Temple of Mithras that was broken, so clearly someone found their way into the chamber with the golden knife and probably couldn't actually uh, remove the knife because the uh, the mechanism that required crushed. two people. And and their game blew up. Um, so let's find someone who has a broken graphics card. Let's go search their houses. <laughs> Mr. Pitkin, you've been in crypto mining, haven't you? Um, so... Garrow admitted that he threw the silver in the fire. So I feel if it's Garrow, then it's not an ice knife. Um, the problem what? I have with this game is it feels like you're really just supposed to guess at the end. Um, like, there's never enough evidence to say conclusively, like, yeah, it's definitely this or definitely the other one. Um, there's always an, an, an element of guesswork involved. I think that's definitely key to the game's themes. The idea that justice is meted out by uh, imperfect actors, even if they are rational and have, like, the best interests right. of the parties in mind. So is this photograph, is that... Um, blank horn in the photograph. It doesn't actually say. It does not. But it it looks like it is blank horn. Like it, it looks. He's got the same, you know, the 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 little tie thing going on with his stuff, and he's got the beard. And if I can remember how to open the inventory, and he's he's there with the ice cream stuff with the ice maker. He would know how to make the knife. I'm leaning towards um Remember you can actually just like press uh, at the top and right. make it appear. I'm I'm leaning towards this at the moment. Because he would have had the knowledge and the resources to to find that secret, he may have known about it ahead of time, known that um, uh, Rodney was was close to discovering it, and then after killing him, or well, no, he might have found it before. But if he did find it beforehand, like he 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 must have found it beforehand because these guys were arrested right after the uh, <clears throat> the murder. Still, like. him being present in that photograph and it not being pointed out, something you're supposed to deduce with the ice maker and the fact that the, as, as ridiculous as I find the ice knife solution here to be, because no, you, could, you can't, you can't mold an, a knife made of ice and then kill some with it. Someone with it like that's it's ice. Just, it melts so fast. It would be dull. Um, There'd be no way to sharpen it anyway, uh, but hey, you know um, this is this is not a, a the most realistic video game in the universe, you know. So ice knife should be in the consideration, and we found the blood that was watery, and that seemed relatively unexplained. Um, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards at the moment, but it's been so long since we talked to these guys. So I kind of want to read through here. Does anybody else have a, a different theory they want to throw? Uh, no, but I would say that I don't think it's glasses, dude. 
Yeah, I, I don't think it's you, Chris. <laughs> oh, man. So when he came up, I was kind of like, this guy looks a little bit like Chris. But then I was like, does he though? Am I just am I just thinking that? And then it was like the first thing people posted in the comments. Yeah, when I when I showed the, the photos of your unfortunate haircut and it happened to be during this investigation, talking to this guy, and you're like, oh, I thought you were saying this guy looks like Chris. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Uh, okay, so, I don't know, I kind of want to grouse some more about the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movies. Sure, feel free. Like, okay, I guess I just want to say that I don't think that it's, like, necessarily bad. Like, a bad concept, like an adventure Sherlock Holmes movies with, like, you know, kind of more out there stunts and combats and stuff. Like, that's fine. Uh, I don't think that it's it's a hateful thing that they were trying to do, even if I'm not, like... Even if I'm, like... I want to say I don't like Guy Ritchie on average, but like, yeah, okay, fair enough. I just think that like they made a lot of decisions in the course of making that movie that make it kind of like unpleasant. Like I, I don't really like Robert Downey Jr.'s performance as Sherlock Holmes. I think that it's like very one note and ultimately kind of grating. Uh, I, I think that like. I think that ultimately the mystery is too confusing to be interesting. There are some parts of it that were kind of cool. I like some of the concepts behind it, but like, you know, I think that it, it, it kind of fell apart a little bit in the execution. I do really like the idea of like of a magician who's trying to convince everyone that he's like a dark wizard. I think that's an awesome Sherlock Holmes villain. But it's also uh, I think that a lot of the, yeah, yeah, and plus I I. I no, it's okay. I also just like really like that actor, uh, Mark Strong, I think. But yeah, uh, I I really did not like what they did with Irene Adler. There's a great essay floating around somewhere about how uh, for some reason, whenever they make Irene Adler in like a Sherlock Holmes adaptation, they turn her into a, like a burglar seductress, like kind of crook Catwoman character. And that's really not what she is in the original short story. But I think that this is probably my least favorite version of that character. Well, I don't know. It's pretty bad in Sherlock, too. Hmm. I think that her whole chemistry with Sherlock Holmes is pretty unwatchable. Like, I, I when I, I see them, I'm not like, ooh, like, mutual attraction, sparks flying, nemeses. It's just like... These people, like, this, none of this feels like, like you're watching something that's good. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to put it, but it just really rubs me the wrong way. It's like somebody, th like, wrote this and thought that it was really cheeky and, like, kind of showed real chemistry, but it has a kind of, it like, it has, like, a bad quality to it. Like, the person who wrote this secretly kind of hates large things about both of these characters. I've never seen any of them, so I couldn't say, you know, one way or the other. Um, I I have a problem with, like, Rodney Downer, Rod, Robert Downey Jr., if I can say his name right, uh, being in like anything because like he's just kind of Iron Man now, like yeah, I don't. To be fair, I don't think he was Iron Man then, at least not like his. When, were the, when was the first film? Yeah, first like Iron, Iron Man, Man was one was two thousand eight. Oh no, no, I, I, I don't mean that. Like he wasn't literally Iron Man. I mean like. Oh, you mean like he wasn't acting like Iron Man? Oh, well, I, I know. I mean like you know, at that point, is just Iron Man had come out. And like you know, like there there was a couple more Iron Man movies. Like the Avengers was not yet a multi like more than one decade long uh, media empire. It was just like he was Iron Man in a few movies. It's like you know how Christian Bale wasn't necessarily Batman after Batman Begins. 
So like, it, like if Robert Downey Jr. tried to do Sherlock Holmes with that performance today, it'd be like, oh, so he's just Iron Man. But it wasn't. It wasn't as much like that back then. I do think that the so they they have a gimmick where he like whenever he gets into a fight, he plans it out in his head. Like, where you sort of see it in slow motion, and then he does it. I think that's pretty neat. I mean, it's like, it's cheesy, but it works. I'm feeling like... What I'm reading is is kind of reinforcing my conclusion that it's it's uh, Blinkhorn with the ice knife, which is a fun sentence to say. Mm. Go for it. He Pull had the, and putting him in jail. the motive. I want to, I want to just kind of like go through this and, and, and explore this. He had the motive because, uh, um, Rodney was kind of basically stealing all of the work that he thought it was his. Um, Uh, Garrow mentioned, Garrow believes the curse is real, and he mentioned that Rodney had shown him some Roman coins. I think that's the silver that we found in the brazier. It was up to coinage standard, according to the analysis. And why would he turn it, like, why would he melt a bunch of silver like that into a knife anyway? Um... Well, I guess you have your conclusion. And we've got this photo. Now, Blinkhorn also admits that he he like he was uh working with Rodney in Egypt. But this photo also shows them with the ice cream maker, which suggests that he knew how to make ice using that method. I feel like like Everything that we found is pointing most towards that. And that's kind of like what the deciding factor has been with these cases. It's like the secondary evidence that seems to line up with one particular um and this is a silver coin. One particular like outcome slightly more than the others. Do it. Commit. Yeah, uh, you, sh you should commit. Uh, the question is, what are you going to pick? Justice or lenience? Yeah, I guess that is the case. Now, before we hit any buttons, let's make absolutely certain we have the right one selected this time. <laughs> yeah. right, we are. Blinkhorn <laughs> with the ice knife. What do we feel like? Absolve or condemn? I mean, you're Sherlock. Nobody seemed to like Rodney all that much. What was that? There was one letter he sent. I wonder if the text is even available to us. Well, while Josh is looking that up, um, so Josh mentioned, like, how None of these cases have, like, smoking guns that definitively, logically point to one person. Or at least, for the most part, that's not how you solve them. And I'd like to make the case that I think that was a very deliberate choice on part of the developers. And my evidence for that is how it specifically does not want you to look up after you've done a case whether you've got it right or not. I really do think that they want you to, as the game progresses and you're handing out sentences, like judging left and right, to do so without the certainty ever really the certainty right that you were correct to always have like some some element of doubt however minor about how you solved a case 
because then only then do you really understand how much responsibility rests on Sherlock's shoulders. And indeed, how much responsibility rests on the shoulders of Lestrade and the investigators, despite the fact that they are entirely unequipped with Sherlock's intelligence. Like, it really sinks in that not only do they have less info than Sherlock does, not only do they have less, like, reason than Sherlock has, but, if anything, they are less inclined to be lenient than Sherlock is. They're more inclined to hang. Right. The only potential quibble I see with this conclusion right now is Pitkin also kind of had a motive, but he also explicitly states that finding the golden knife would be good. But um, Bentcliffe was... Um, Rodney Bentcliffe was talking about how like uh, Pitkin was, was not particularly helpful, but... Um, uh, some Lord Blackmore guy stepped in and he stood down. Uh, but still, I don't. I feel like the other secondary evidence is kind of pointing this direction. So, I think we just go with it. Um, I, let's absolve him, I guess. Less because of him than because everyone hated the guy. No, what also, you say like I'm. I'm super not sure about this answer here. Like I was this is by about far to say. Like, the last the last case I was I was very certain about who did what, like by the end of it. But this one like, mm. I, th I think that that's an important part of this game. When you feel a doubt, you feel more inclined to give absolution. Right. Although I'll say the the last case, it wasn't so much absolution as was like, will we handle this quietly and maybe they get away, or do we right, just like was... bring in the fucking the police? Right. And that was exploring other, uh, that was exploring related, but, uh, different themes, I think. Yeah. Like, that was, that was an alternate right, perspective. So let's hit it. Now, I've Stop. heard that even if you what get happened? it wrong, the game magically warps it to Sherlock always being this. right. Is that I don't know that that's true. How? I also like to dig. You see, Mr. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you one mean. Never actually, knows what one might find. if you if you select the wrong one, it'll still pretend that Sherlock is right, and it'll just say like, "Oh, this. this was the wrong conclusion." The thrill of the discovery and one's own enhanced. So, in what way does it pretend you're right? Wouldn't you agree? Like, like if if I'm I were to just accuse Garrow and he anything. were definitely not the one who I did it, it would no. You found the knife. It would, uh, it would say like, "Oh yeah, man. that's that's what happened." The ghost knife shall remain one of the most hmm. ingenious constructions I have seen in my career. I do assure you. I don't understand. Yes, you do. I am praising your performance. Your perfect murder. What? Wait, are, are you accusing me of murder? No, I deny it. Mister Blinkhorn, it is no use to deny it. I know the truth. You had no choice. Because it was you who found the golden knife, and therefore you had to be the murderer. Sir Rodney was determined to receive all the credit for the find, when in fact it was your work. He would have crushed you to be sure that you could never tell the truth. But I uphold the truth, and I will tell it. What do you mean? That you will save me? What I mean is that you deserve a second chance. I shall be following your career. Getting the feeling that was not the correct answer. Farewell. You'll find out. Oh, wow, it was. Okay. <laughs> that was... Uh, lots of people have told me, they were like, this case, I don't... Like, this was the one that was like, there wasn't enough evidence to say anything, but I guess that one photograph was what really got me on this tangent here. I mean, you know, you, was you that said he, like there he wasn't knew much how evidence, the ice maker worked. Yeah, you pretty much put together every part of the case. Well, I can't believe I managed to do that, given how fucking crazy this case has been. <laughs> oh yeah, we went and found an unexcavated temple full of the labyrinth and everything. Yep. Now let's move on to the next case, which is more restrained. I would hope so. 
Um, we're at with the other footage that from before everything blew up. We're at almost like we're at like fifty five minutes or something like that. We. What? I said we can stop. All right. Next time we will be back for case number four, um, wherein we will hopefully not be doing anything no more involving a oh, wait, buried temple. This, oh wait, this actually is not my favorite case. Uh, I, I got confused about which one is next. This one's still fine though. Okay, cool. So your favorite case is the last one then. Second to last one. I thought there were five. Six. Oh. All right. Well, um, we will. We'll be back next week. Bye.